Creamer Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Richard Duffy, the CEO of Petra Diamonds, the London-listed diamond mining company with operating diamond mines in South Africa and Tanzania. Hi, Richard. It's great to chat to you once again. What, in your view, were the key highlights of Petra's recently held Investor Day? Yeah, I think the main focus of our Investor Day was to demonstrate the resilience of our business through steps we've implemented over the recent months. I think the key features were the fact that we have reduced our cost base by $30 million on a sustainable annualized basis. We also have, uh, through replanning uh, our, our mines, smoothed our capital profile on a go-forward basis to uh, around $100 million per annum or, or less. And the main reason for, for doing these things was to ensure that our business is cash generative from this financial year 2025 and also uh, around deleveraging our balance sheet with a view to refinancing uh, our second lien loan notes, which mature in March 26. And we highlighted that we would be looking to refinance those loan notes before the end of this calendar year to ensure that we can provide certainty around the business and the resilience that we've built in the business. And Richard, what specifically were the life of mine updates and what does this mean for production as well as the future of Petra? So I think, Martin, with regards to life of mine, what we highlighted was that we have world-class long-life assets. So in the case of Cullinan Mine, uh, we, we have an approved mine plan, a board approved mine plan uh, that goes through to 2033, but we have the potential through further extensions in uh, the mine itself to be mining through to beyond 2050. So Cullinan Mine is uh, an iconic world-class ore body and we will be mining there for, you know, for decades to come. At Finch Mine, uh, we, we highlighted that the approved Board approved mine plan sees mining go uh, through to 2032, but with the potential to go continue mining below the current block five uh, to see Finch continue mining through to 2040. And Williamson, our open pit operation in Tanzania, has an approved mine plan to, to 2030 with extension opportunities and growth opportunities through to also well into the 2040. So I think what we highlighted through the revised mine plans that see smooth capital profiles is long life potential. And we also provided uh, guidance for the next five years to the market uh, so that we could create some visibility uh, in terms of our production. And essentially uh, what we see is growing from the current levels of around 2.8 million carats annually uh, to around three and a half million carats by 2028. So we see growth. Most of that growth comes from increasing grade, both at Cullinan Mine and Finch. And that's part of the, the growth journey, having reset the cost base and having smoothed the capital uh, profile. And Richard, you still speak of a lower for longer diamond market. How does this impact Petra? Yeah, Martin, I think what we've seen is, uh, you know, a diamond market that we expect will continue uh, to remain uh, a little softer through to the end of this calendar year. Uh, we took measures uh, towards the end of last year in recognition of what we expected to be a, a weaker for longer market, as you say. I've spoken to resetting the cost base and smoothing the capital profile, but the steps we took back in October uh, 2023 around deferring some of our capital spend and, and initiating that cost savings program that I've spoken to uh, actually meant that we were able to reduce our net debt by $11 million uh, from the end of December 2023 uh, to the end of June uh, 24, the end of our financial year 24. So the measures we have taken ensured that uh, we stopped any cash burn in the business, even in a tougher market, and the steps we've taken around our costs and our smooth capital profile mean that we will continue to be resilient as a business. And as I said earlier, be cash generative from this financial year 25 onwards. So we, we're well placed to, to benefit from an improving market, which we expect to see uh, from next calendar year. 
And Richard, can you explain why you're more confident about the market in the medium to long term? Yeah, I think what we've seen uh, in, in the market is the culmination of a number of factors that have created some headwinds for us. And, and that really has been on the back of you know, the, the higher interest and in inflation rates that have been a little more stubborn than, than expected. The slower return of demand from China, which is an important market uh, for, for diamonds, and then the disruption caused by the rapid growth of, of lab-grown uh, diamonds that disrupted uh, the, the diamond market. So those were the factors that have led to the uh, softer market, as I mentioned, which we expect to continue through to the end of December. Why are we more encouraged in the medium to longer term around what we expect to be a supportive uh, diamond market? is around some of the underlying supply demand fundamentals. If you look at projected supply or global production of diamonds all the way through to 2033, uh, the projections are that we will see an average 1% decline on an annual basis over that period. So on a, from a supply point of view, we're not going to see any uh, new supply coming on stream, any new production coming on stream. When you look at the demand side, there's projected growth to 2033 of 2 to 4%. So from a fundamental supply-demand perspective, there is a structural supply deficit. The, the U.S. Uh, is, is the most important market for diamonds. Uh, uh, the U.S. buys uh, around 50% of all diamonds. And the projections are that they, they will continue to grow in terms of demand through to 2033. Interestingly, China isn't projected to grow at the same rate as the U.S., but importantly, India is emerging as a very strong consumer uh, with 30% growth uh, forecast through to 2033. And we see India and the growing middle class as a new, increasingly important market for diamonds that is likely to overtake uh, China. So supply-demand fundamentals are supportive uh, for the diamond market. If you look at lab-grown diamonds, the disruption they caused initially was largely the result, I think, of uh, consumers not properly understanding this new lab-grown diamond category. But over uh, the last few years, we've seen the price of lab-growns collapse to now sell at a discount of 80 to 90% of a natural diamond. So prices have come down significantly, margins have come down significantly, and as a result, lab-growns are now firmly established as a different product category in the diamond space. They're a cheap early entry point, and I think that that differentiation will become more uh, discernible and clearer uh, over time as a result of that. Also importantly, uh, retailers, jewelers are, are shifting back to natural be simply because the price of lab grown has collapsed, the margins have collapsed, and it doesn't make economic sense for them to continue uh, to push lab grown. So we see, uh, in a sense, some reversal of the displacement of, of lab grown that we saw previously uh, in favor of natural diamonds. And another important point uh, is a number of lab-grown producers have uh, stated that they're moving out of producing gem lab-grown diamonds and they're shifting their lab-grown production to industrial applications you know, around uh, semiconductors, etc. This is uh, led by De Beers uh, Lightbox business where they've indicated they're no longer going to be producing uh, gem lab-grown diamonds, and the same is true of a number of other large lab-grown producers. So for all of those reasons, uh, we see inventory levels starting to come down across that value chain going into next year, a shift away from lab-grown back to natural, and the, the, the general economics uh, starting to shift in favor of diamonds with the structural supply deficit uh, providing the support that we refer to. And how do you see traceability unfolding? And what advantage will this give producers in general and Petri in particular? So we, we see this, this traceability technology as, as uh, being part of the differentiation I referred to earlier between lab grown and natural diamonds. What this technology allows us to do, and we're busy piloting this at the moment, we, we're working uh, in collaboration with De Beers Tracer, business and uh, Serene, their uh, diamond journey technology. And, and, and what this allows us to do is to map all of our half a carat 
uh, gem quality diamonds and, and half a carat in the rough and larger. We able to map these diamonds. We then blockchain upload those uh, details, the data around uh, the diamonds that gets blockchained in a register. And we then trace that diamond through uh, the cutting and polishing. Our clients link the polished diamonds back to the original rough. And uh, that enables the, the traceability of the diamond all the way through to the retail jeweler. So essentially from mine to finger. A consumer who then walks into, for example, a jewelry store in New York to buy a one carat engagement ring, there would be a certificate associated uh, with that that would state that the diamond was recovered from Cullinan Mine in 2020. It would set out the number of employees that Cullinan Mine employs. It will also provide details on all of the social and community projects undertaken by the mine and would include the carbon footprint associated with that carat of polished diamond. So there's a whole story uh, around uh, the diamond that reinforces that purchase experience for the consumer and uh, verifies that that diamond is a natural diamond, where it was mined from, and then by definition is not lab grown and, and also is not uh, a sanctioned uh, diamond. So we see that as, as being important, uh, not just around telling the story of, of, of the natural diamond, but also uh, around creating an opportunity to grow margin as part of that uh, story uh, around the, the mine to, to finger the journey. And finally, Richard, what's next for Petra? Martin, yeah, I think having reset the cost base, uh, delivered new life of mine plans with a smooth capital profile, the focus is very much around refinancing uh, our $250 million loan notes. We plan to get that done before the end of uh, this calendar year. And then, and, and then I think we, we uh, will be in a position to execute on the growth potential of our assets, Cullen and Mine, Finch and, and Williamson, and really begin to execute on our value-led growth strategy uh, that uh, I think Petra, not just through its existing asset base, but other opportunities will be able to deliver and certainly leverage what we believe will be a much more supported market uh, from next calendar year. That was Creo Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Richard Duffy, the CEO of Petra Diamonds, the London-listed diamond mining company with operating diamond mines in South Africa and Tanzania.